Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. Uh, my name is Will Kreth. I'm the CEO and founder of Hand Human and Digital, a company based in New York with teams distributed around the world, um, based in the world of talent identification for performing arts and sports, uh, providing a new unique identifier for performing arts and sports talent, for the first time at the ISO level using uh, a system called the Digital Object Identifier. And we'll get into unpacking about what that's about. And also uh, a little bit of our story about where we come from the predictive analytics side of things using knowledge graphs and how um, we got into this whole interesting journey and mad adventure together. I'm the, the former executive uh, director of the Entertainment ID Registry most recently before starting HAND. Uh, that's the uh, basically the barcode of, for the film and television industry around uh, content identification, unique machine readable content identification for film and television titles. Uh, that's been around for now 12 years since 2010. Uh, before that, I was the uh, director of metadata management for Showtime Networks here in New York City. And, I, and I've also talked to a lot of people too. So it wasn't just all experiential knowledge, which is great, was also the the, the process of interviewing and and yeah. and having those those hallway discussions at trade shows and conferences and events where you you get to understand the pain points, but also the aspirations and dreams of of folks who say, yeah. "Wouldn't it be great if we could do this?" or "Wouldn't yeah. it be great if we had all the media objects in the supply chain properly identified, mm -hmm. tagged, key master data tagged at every step of the way?" And what does key master mean? Key master data in like the, the master data management world of, of the media entertainment business is really about you know, the media objects in, in the in the industry in, in, in within the, the systems, right? So that could be the mezzanine file of the of the of the television series that actually is the what gets broadcast or streamed to millions of viewers. Um, it could also be the the bonus material and the unit photography and the and uh, the, the captions and all, all the master data that has to reside somewhere in a, in a digital asset management system or master, an MDM system, that's your key master data. Right. And the more machine readable it is, the better it is for everyone because Absolutely. unstructured data and text strings are anathema <laughs> to the notion of optimizing the workflows, but also the ability to, to map out and graph that data. Yeah. And so that's where the graph story carried coming in. It was like, well, we wanted to do a predictive analytics business, mm -hmm. to predict talents propensity for success in the future based on past performance but mm -hmm. what we ran up against was this situation of knowing oh talent is not identified with machine readable unique ids mm -hmm. unique identifiers at a at a global level yeah and wouldn't it be great if it was because that's been a conversation industry going back to 2017 yeah. 2016 and oh by the way who would do it or well, like look search the whole room and say <laughs> I, I guess that's me Right. Yeah, so, yeah. And so there's a there's a there's an origin story there that makes kind of makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you look at other industries, you know, that, that folks on the channel might be familiar with, like there's ORCID IDs for authors. There absolutely. are things called DOIs that are unique identifiers for creative works like books and things like that. Search paper, these scientific exist. community. Yeah. So these exist um, because there are similar problems in, in other industries. And so it's it's really great to see that you're you're embarking down more of this um in your space, Will. So let's let's see it. Let's see what, what you're all all about. I want to make clear that our in our going to market with this new company, we're talent identification, uh performing arts and sports only, and also very important talent, not user identity. Mm -hmm. Now there's a huge multi-billion dollar industry worldwide around uh, improving in identity and access management, information, you know, user identity. That is not the space we're in. Yep. And, and exactly. I'll learn more about that. Good clarification, Will. Thank you. So to, to, to create this predictive analytics business for, for talent, 
as we as we as we dug into it and realized that we had to create a talent identity by necessity to automate that talent supply chain globally, to uh, to build it into a true creative artist and works ontology, and then. Then we only and only then would we feel like we had the foundational level for predictive analytics. And so you see in this example here, this is a creative works ontology from Movie Labs, Motion Picture Laboratories. Um, an example of John Favreau and Scarlett Johansson and how they're connected. There's a, there's less than a six degrees of separation here. There's a two there's a one degree of two degree of separation separation here because we know they interoperate uh, in the Marvel universe and they interoperate in just the, the Hollywood universe. And how all of these these objects, like those movies, the book, the individuals, are part of a of an industry and a supply chain, so they have to be identified with machine readable data. So yep. let's get it going. And yeah. why are some so why are some of those things important? Why is it important to uniquely identify Scarlett Johansson versus another person named Scarlett Johansson? For disambiguation purposes, thank you, uh, Ashley, and also for the notion of saying. Uh, for the trust element of saying we attest to the authenticity of this individual in a persistent way for the years. The talent of that individual, not the individual as in her social security number and DNA kind of thing, right? Not biometric and not government issued <laughs> IDs. No, no. And then, in fact, we we were here to drive PII government issued IDs out of the workflow, out of the supply chain, mm -hmm. and bring a proxy identifier into into the space. Lovely, and that makes it safer for the talent as well. It does. And so, but there has to be a criteria, there has to be a critical metric by which you say, what is talent, right? And so um, talent is, by broad definitions, those who are notable, individuals who can get a Wikipedia page, for instance, and have it not be deleted. And how it's not deleted is through citations. The, the history, the, the, the you, know, I, I, you know, hundreds of years of, of citations of, of published works, of literary works and authors, based on the, the notion that you can reference something that came before from multiple third-party sources is a valuable thing. So we've developed a system we call citation back notability that allows for a criteria, a set of critical metrics to say Scarlett and John Favreau and you know JJ Abrams and Ava DuVernay all are talent based on not just because one person says so or they or their management or their team say so mm -hmm. but but dozens sometimes in many cases or hundreds in many cases of individuals have identified them as being uh creative talent and and by their works and, and that's in scholarship too so to, to define something as trustworthy you do something called triangulation you are mm -hmm. trying to find others that agree or or have cited that same thing so you can have trust in it Right, and that's under the underlying underpinning uh, notion of bibliometrics, right? Uh, how uh, how many different um, attestable um, uh, citations you can accumulate creates a weight. Uh, Google PageRank relies on this as well too. Mm -hmm. The number of people pointing at a website is uh, is what will rate rise it up in the in the search results. Mm -hmm. No surprise there. Every, a lot of people know that. Not everyone, but a lot of people. <laughs> so a little sneak preview of our tech stack. And, and so, you, so to get people in and say, well, where's this data coming from? We have a seed data, a set of seed data sources. This is not a complete list. We have many others as well. We are creating a, uh, a process by which we'll, uh, we bring data into a uh, NoSQL environment, match, merge, dedupe, cleanse, normalize that data. We have a, a registration process based on citation back notability that allows us to create a new hand identifier in cooperation with the DOI um, uh, uh, handle system. Mm -hmm. And we also have a transformation layer at the upper right side, which we'll spend more time about unpacking later in the presentation, yeah. understanding uh, the, the ontology and the knowledge graph by which we wish to build here. Nice. And this is a very traditional workflow, which I think helps us understand that you've done your homework, <laughs> right? Uh, the hand waving and hot air. We keep the hand waving and hot air to a minimum. You know what? <laughs> bring come correct. The real bring, deal. <laughs> bring it, bring it, and come correct, and 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 don't fake it on Ashley's show. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the problem statement. We say premium talent is going virtual, uh, and it's evolving, and it's moving into the virtual world. And so, in this example, we take the great Idris Elba, who's a, a human who breathes and pays taxes, walks on this earth today. Um, he's a legal entity. He is an actor. He's a DJ. He's a, represented by a talent agency. He's an award winner. He has lots of citations about his credibility on this planet. He also 
has a virtual character and uh, and it, and and we've seen this with the game world where in the game NBA 2K20 he had a 3D scan of his body motion captured or mocap as they say in the biz mm -hmm. um of and his voice acting lent to the fictional character coach Ernie Ames in this example mm -hmm. for two iterations of this game uh NBA 2K20 he plays a very convincing NBA basketball coach um but in the 2022 model they took the uh the, the he no longer had the contract and they put the synthetic character who looks like a russian mobster i'm not sure exactly why he did this and they kept the same name for some crazy reason and demoted him from head coach to assistant coach it, it, anyway it's a little funny a little peculiar the fans were puzzled on reddit yeah. but what i will say is also that it speaks to the interchangeability yeah. of fictional characters spider-man batman portrayed by like so many different people so this talent goes virtual and talent identity identi talent identity must evolve that's part of the story here so for the different customers we have in our roadmap of, of the future the executives and the rights holders on the talent side we see uh, the producers distributors and the casting and advertising executives we see that there's a potential we mentioned earlier, social security numbers. Those were found to be still in operation between agencies and payment processors, mm -hmm. which allows for the potential identity theft, which is just a, mm -hmm. a bad thing overall. Plus yeah. privacy regulations, California and Europe and different places are going to increasingly be demanding that that, that type of, of identif identification data not be shared in mm -hmm. business transactions in, 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 the, in the, the back and forth, the, the mm -hmm. transactional models mm -hmm. between different companies. The potential for deep fakes. We saw the Bruce Willis story about his face being potentially licensed to different companies. We see that Wall Street Journal just had an article about actors and public figures being used in commercials without their permission. Right. So identifying the the individual, it's not just know your customers, know your talent, yeah. uh, and also know the intellectual property rights and the and the and the licensing and the the business relationships to the people who are the caretakers or the owners of those name image and likeness rights well and and i also know from being a personality so to speak on youtube i have so many um people i know on youtube that have suffered from this exact thing where they're maybe reviewing something maybe a product and then they're doing it just for their channel but the 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 folks that own that product or a product that's like the product they will take that and they will use it in all of their marketing and and that creator um does not get any credit for it and the creators i'm thinking of um they make money off of their youtube channel i do not um but they do and so that's um kind of icky that they're not getting paid for the work that they did too yes we're definitely on the sides of the rights holders and the and the for the participation of the talent in real and virtual spaces that they get attributed for the work they do and thus compensated for their time and energy and effort and amazing talent. Yeah. Uh, so um, there's definitely ways in which the industry can benefit from identifying all the key master data and, and uh, in this case talent mm -hmm. at the the object level mm -hmm. and tagging it appropriately and having that be a persistent identifier uh, in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So uh, part of the story goes into saying, well, that sounds very nice and well, but you wanted to build this analytics business. So how does that unpack and how does that work? Mm -hmm. So name image likeness data. Um, this is a key thing for athletes. The NCAA lost a ruling from the Supreme Court just a couple of years ago that said that individuals can monetize their name image likeness rights in, in amateur and professional sports. One example I give is, if LeBron James uh, was still in high school back as he was years ago, it was known as to be a future uh, star, he could endorse a sneaker product <laughs> or a college athlete could endorse a, uh, a sneaker uh, today, whereas a few years ago they could not because there were laws prohibiting that from the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a, it's a huge effort around identifying talent earlier and earlier and also, uh, also making sure that you've got you 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 know who you you speak you're dealing with yeah. and, you, and the rights are protected and that you have a chain of custody back to the ownership. Um, supply chain automation finally arrives for talent identity and performing arts and sports is kind of the headline. If you take away nothing else from this, <laughs> Hand Human and Digital is developing a talent identifier to bring supply chain automation to mm -hmm. performing arts and sports at a global level mm -hmm. and an interoperable level, mm -hmm. allowing companies around the world to have a trusted, like a Dun & Bradstreet number, have a trusted identifier number that ties back to 
the, the chain of custody of knowing who you're dealing with in all instances, and that there was a criteria, a set of critical metrics that uh, allowed them to say the identifier was was issued based on attribution and attestations of authenticity. Mm-hmm. And so, one question to that, though, Will, is have you thought about what happens if somebody contests the 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 decision that you make, if they are saying I am a talent, but they don't get verified? I mean, what happens there? That's a great question, Ashley. We'll publish our criteria to the world Good. when we're ready so that the, the the methodology is transparent. What we've seen around and why I say blue check marks are useless, and mm. not just because of the recent <laughs> stories with Twitter, but there was a ProPublica article this last summer about fixers who for 15000 bucks US were being paid to game the system to get blue check marks on Instagram. Yeah. And when ProPublica broke the story, uh, Instagram had to remove hundreds of individuals who had um, unauthentically mm. uh, applied for blue check mark status. And mm. they were not worthy based on the fact that they were really not uh, yeah. met, the, did not meet the criteria. Not well, mean- and this is the other thing. If, if folks are not familiar with the IDs that are on the screen here, all of them have the same kind of um, checks and balances in place. There's a vetting, there's a vetting process. Absolutely. Yes. Right. So you can't get ISRC code without a song and, and you can't have Spotify or Apple Music or any major streaming platform without ISRC codes to automate the supply chain of streaming music. Mm-hmm. OK. And either is that for the film and television industry, increasingly so where um, the major studios and networks are are relying upon IDA IDs in their workflows from the start. When Disney Plus began, and I saw the presentation from the Disney representatives at the IDA annual conference, Mm -hmm. um, they tagged all the content on Disney Plus before it even opened up for business in 2019 with uh, with IDA IDs, including uh, the making of bonus content, trailers, Mm -hmm. extras, all of it had either IDs to so they keep track of it that way. Absolutely, and yeah. then then you were having a, a system that's based on a global standard as opposed yeah. to one company owns it or a proprietary yeah. standard. Yeah. Our standard is at that ISO DOI level. Yeah, so it's you. It's it's more on the universal side. It's not you know playing favorites. It's saying nope. If you come to the table, we're going to be upfront and open about the criteria. Right. And and you get an ID if if you qualify according to being a real piece of talent. Right. Uh, and and <laughs> if you go on. Okay. Right? A, a credible talent uh, <laughs> a, 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 a person in a moment. Our friends in the industry have taken notice of what we're working on. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to show folks um, some quotes here, which are kind of micro testimonials as to the opportunity that we're bringing to the marketplace and, and how we're trying to in the value chain, add value if by inserting ourselves in the process as opposed mm-hmm. to individuals who or companies that, that insert themselves in an existing process and add no value to the process. Yeah. We don't and want then, to be one of those. <laughs> and, and, and a tip for those watching, um, we're probably not going to stay on this slide too long. So pause the video if you want to read them. <laughs> Very good. So back to the, 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 uh, the tech stack. Want to talk about the technology and benefits, right? So the sense of what we're providing is non-reputable tagging, identifying, as I mentioned before, key master data reduces friction, drives workflow automation, analytics and reporting across the supply chain, the security of driving out those PIIs, those, those unique identifiers that are tied to government issued IDs, the personal identifiable information. Drive nobody out. wants those, right? Like that. That's that's not just sure. risky for for the person, but it's risky for the companies to have that stuff too. Yeah, there's there's uh there's a that puts puts the risk, it's obligations that they don't really do put onto their onto their exactly. their balance sheet. It's something they they don't really want to be touching because ultimately it drives the opportunity for identity theft, and that's something nobody wants. And then uh down the road, um looking at the potential for it being a ground truth or a north star uh tied into a smart contract, we're ready for blockchain ready from from day mm-hmm. one. Yeah, and a lot of folks on the publishing side are also interested in in keeping that provenance of of uh, blockchain um, for for any any person, author, publication, that sort of thing. And I love also that will that, you know we've been focusing a lot on the ID, and this is the process to the ID. But there's also all this cool stuff that's going to be coming, like teaser here for anyone. Um, more more to come in the years to come uh, for hand on 
all of the cool stuff you're going to do with the knowledge graph, because this ID stuff is, is firmly cemented in linked data, W3C standards. You're using an RDF graph, which means you can start to do some cool stuff with this uh, once this really gets off the ground. It, it's, table, it's table stakes. Yeah. So let's dig into the just our markets and verticals. Won't spend a lot of time here, but just suffice to say, between producers and distributors, the, the, the talent guilds, the sports federations and leagues, the talent agencies, the payment processors, because that's where the real the the transaction value hits where the where you know, compensation and the money uh, hits the rubber hits the road, and then the platforms at the bottom of only three are mentioned here, but there are definitely many other platforms when it comes to. The well, and this shows how big of an impact that you could really have with this. Right, and and thank you. And so uh, while it's there's plenty to do, we we know that uh, the opportunity here uh, is if baby steps. You know, we're incremental progress on this. But the but the trajectory and the uh, and the sky is 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 high. It's a high ceiling. Yeah. There's a, it's a yeah. high ceiling for us. Yeah, but you're doing it the right way. You're laying the correct foundation uh, for all of this. Mm -hmm.